Okay, let's go. I stumbled across Sammy Williams' story in 2010. Though mysterious, Sammy's life was filled with common human themes, love, heartbreak, compassion, and purpose. Born in Norway in the 1830s, Sadie, Sammy later immigrated to the United States with family and a fiancé who happened to be a childhood friend. Sammy's family settled in Alamaki County, Iowa, and the couple began planning their upcoming marriage. Unexpectedly, Sammy's future mother-in-law broke off the engagement, perhaps because of Sammy's low position in society. Sammy was devastated and overcome with grief and a broken heart, Sammy simply disappeared. In the 1860s, Sammy surfaced in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, using the name Billy. While no known photographs exist of Billy, his friends described him as small and dark-haired with a slight hunchback. Billy was well-liked in Wisconsin. He optimistically pushed aside his broken heart to create a new life among new friends. Billy found work as a cook in area logging camps, and word of his talent spread rapidly. It was evident that he'd found his true calling. Billy Cook, as his nickname became, could not only prepare food, but was a good friend. He loved to go out on the town with the lumberjacks, dancing, drinking, and having a good time with his buddies. In addition to speaking Norwegian, English, and German fluently, Billy showed a knack for quickly learning native languages during his time working at logging camps in Wisconsin. His shrewd business mind and financial skills allowed Billy to purchase several buildings and lots in Eau Claire, a rare feat for most people of his class. But most of all, Billy was admired for his generosity. He cared for sick friends and battled poverty in his community by unobtrusively leaving cash behind him wherever he saw a need. Even after he left Wisconsin, Billy continued to send money back to his friends, never seeking acknowledgement for his kindness. Independent and successful as he was, Billy could not forget his family and made one last trip home to catch a glimpse of them and his former fiance, who had since married another. Fearing a painful interaction, Billy disguised himself for his trip to Iowa and quickly returned to Wisconsin unrecognized. After 20 years, Billy's painful past invaded his peaceful existence in Wisconsin. The severed family ties and assumed name protected him from his sorrow for many years, but eventually they failed. In the 1880s, a Norwegian family familiar with his parents in Iowa moved to Eau Claire and noticed Billy's resemblance. Word of a possible sighting of their long-lost child reached Billy's parents, and Billy's brother traveled to Eau Claire to persuade Billy to return home. The attempt was unsuccessful, but the encounter did have an effect on Billy. He decided it was time to move away from Eau Claire and start over again in a new place. Billy Williams sold his property in Wisconsin and traveled west, working as a cook for a few years on a North Dakota farm. Little is known of the details of Billy's life there, but he surely continued to impress everyone around him with his selflessness and generosity. Billy also started going by a new name, Sammy Williams. One day in the early 1890s, Sammy stepped off the train in Manhattan, Montana, and entered the local saloon to wash a few drinks down his travel-weary throat. He struck up a conversation with local rancher Henry Hebe, who had just lost the cook at his ranch. Sensing an opportunity, Sammy replied, I cook good. <laughs> Sammy spent the next 18 years in and around Manhattan cooking for various ranch outfits like the Hebe Ranch and the Meadowbrook Ranch. He got along well with the Montana Cowboys and shared the bunkhouse with the rest of the hired hands, first to rise in the morning and the last one in bed at night. In the fall of 1908, Sammy was probably in his late 60s or early 70s, and his health had begun to decline. Concerned friends advised him to see a doctor, but Sammy just brushed off their suggestions. He continued to chew tobacco, enjoy a stiff drink from time to time, and cook for his friends at the Manhattan Company Ranch. On December 10, 1908, Sammy Williams died. There are several different reports of exactly what happened. One report claimed Sammy suffered a heart attack one evening while working in the kitchen. Another suggested that hungry cowboys found Sammy dead in his bunk after he failed to prepare breakfast for them one morning. Sammy's body was taken to George R. Safely, a local rancher, businessman, and undertaker. Safely soon made a shocking discovery. Sammy Williams was no man but a woman. The news spread like wildfire, and locals were stunned. 
Why would a woman take such pains to disguise herself as a man for so many years? Local, local jeweler C.J. O'Dell thought he had seen Sammy Williams years ago in Wisconsin. He wrote to Eau Claire's police chief, who provided O'Dell with the entire story. According to the Wisconsin authorities, Sammy's real name was Ingeborg. She was Norwegian and had long ago immigrated to Iowa with her parents and fiancé. According to the story, Ingeborg was excited for her upcoming marriage as she began to sew her wedding clothes. The broken engagement came unexpectedly and devastated her. As she ran away, she made a choice, a choice that would allow a lonely woman to live a private, secure, and independent life in the 19th century American West. At the time of her death, Ingeborg owned 320 acres of land outside of Manhattan. One source claimed she was scheduled to sign a deed to sell her land on the day she died. Though impossible to verify her intentions, some Manhattan locals believed that she was planning to return to Iowa, knowing her life was drawing to a close. Ingeborg's funeral was short and simple. Held just days after her death, no one yet knew her full story. Reverend James McGowan spoke briefly, after which Ingeborg was buried in Meadowview Cemetery. Despite their shock at her secret, her friends chipped in and purchased a headstone for her, still uncertain of her real name. Her tombstone reads, a female whose real name is unknown, but who has been for many years known as Sammy Williams. What is certain is that despite her hardship, Sammy was a kind, caring person. Her contemporaries remarked on her sad life story, but perhaps her life wasn't so sad after all. I hope it was fulfilling. Thank you.